Hi everybody, JJ with Experiences with My Dog, and I've got Bowie, right? Bowie? Good girl, good girl. Okay. Oh yes, you're interested about that, huh? What is that, what is that? That's the Falcona Go. So we're actually gonna be giving you guys a little bit of a kind of a hands-on impression and insights into this guy. This is a brand new activity tracker for your dog for 2019. So we're gonna go ahead and give you my initial kind of impressions and thoughts and how it stacks up against uh, the Fit Bark 2 as well as the Whistle 3 and whether or not this might be the right choice for you if you're interested in getting an activity tracker for your dog. So what essentially is the Falcon Go? Well, it's an activity tracker. If you're not familiar with activity trackers for dogs, they're pretty much just like activity trackers for people. If you're familiar with something like a Fitbit uh, or any number of the other different types of items that are out there, or like an iWatch that track you know, your steps and your movement for people, this is the same type of concept essentially for your dog. Now, why might you wanna do that? Well, there's a lot of reasons. A lot of people actually think their dogs are very active when they're not in their homes. And actually in uh, the most cases, you'll actually find your dog is probably just gonna be laying or sleeping. Um, also, a lot of people actually overfeed their dogs in relation to the amount of physical activity they get. And it's really hard to know kind of how much your dog is really, let's say, moving when you take them on a walk or when you play fetch or when you're playing tug of war with them or that you take them to the dog park and they're playing with other dogs. You might kind of get a sense of how much activity they're getting, but you don't really know concretely. Um, having an activity tracker, and I can definitely tell you having it on all three of my dogs, really helps you to have a clear, consistent sense of how much activity your dog is getting and how that correlates to the amount of calories that they're burning so that you can go ahead and optimally make sure to feed a right balance so that your dog isn't getting more food um, than essentially the amount of activity that they're getting. This helps to, of course, keep them ultimately healthier and have a much better quality of life. And also allows you to really, I think, gauge how you engage with your dog and the experiences you have with your dog in a far more kind of consistent and fun fashion because it might mean, hey, let's go ahead and take them on a walk. Let's go ahead and take them on a run. Let's go ahead and play with them um, because you kind of can know that you're trying to hit these targets, you know, easily and effectively. And you can consistently look at this information through, you know, an app on your phone or your tablet or whatever it might be. So uh, that's kind of really what this guy is all about. So how does this kind of compare to the current crop? Well, really I'd say the leaders out there in the marketplace are probably gonna be the Fitbark uh, series of trackers. They now have their second generation unit that's on the market. And there's also the Whistle, which is now in its third generation. Both of those are fairly similar, although the Whistle does integrate GPS. Although I definitely say the accuracy and the consistency of that GPS experience is definitely not that great, but it does kind of give you a rough barometer, I think, of location. Now, this unit focuses really, I'd say, on quality analytics and information for health tracking purposes. And that's kind of really their claim to fame is that they're saying that this is clinical grade data. So I think that comes through kind of a couple of different forms. One, it's through the kind of the hardware sensors that they built into this to be able to track all the different aspects for your dog in terms of things like movement and acceleration. Um, because dogs, of course, they have a lot of dynamic movement to them. So it's important to be able to kind of track them in a lot of different ways. Um, but it's also very important what you do with that information. So they, over the last two years, have been working with a lot of world-class veterinary institutes to be able to go ahead and then take this information from the sensors and ultimately be able to go ahead and process it and provide it to you within an application to kind of predictively tell you what might be going on with your dog. So if let's say your dog is kind of really lethargic or certain things are going on, they might be kind of precursory, be able to let you know maybe this is something you want to kind of advise your vet about or do something about. And do they have a longer term vision, which is not yet ready within the initial application um, that they essentially are communicating that you're going to have the ability to have essentially have um, your veterinarian have access to this information within the mobile app and maybe even have access to kind of a larger database where you can get kind of additional insights and recommendations on how to manage maybe let's say these notifications you're getting if essentially the app and the Falcona Go itself kind of report something that you might want to be concerned about in terms of your dog's kind of activity or overall health. So that's what they kind of mean by that. Now, in terms of the unit itself, this is the Helix. It's ultra lightweight. Um, it's eight grams. It's it's really, really, really impressive. So it's very similar to the Fit Bark 2 in that regard. I think the construction, the fit and finish is actually quite a bit better, though it seems quite a bit tougher in that regard. Um, so eight grams, I think, works great because this will work really for every type of a breed, even kind of, I think, small breed dogs, uh, medium and large breed. It's very, very easy and very lightweight. It'll fit on collars. Um, beyond that, this is gonna be waterproof, which is great if you're into water sports or your dog kind of gets into things all over the place and water is gonna be in play. Um, it's also really great that if you're gonna still be walking your dog, whether it's gonna be kind of sprinkling or raining, you don't have to worry about it. It's gonna be good to go. It's got an integrated LED light, which is nice for the nighttime if you just wanna have some visibility uh, for your dog in terms of kind of walking around, you know that somebody can see your dog, even if they can't see the dog, quote unquote, especially for let's say like a dog like I've got, like Ultron, who's predominantly black, you really wanna have some type of light or you wanna have something on him so that he's visible in the nighttime. 
Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the construction, they quote unquote say is bite proof. I definitely think that, you know, with a medium to a large breed dog, they could definitely get through this, but it definitely does feel quite tough. I can definitely tell you, you know, I'm 6'2", over 200 pounds. I can put a lot of torque on this and it's not flexing, it's not moving. I'm quite impressed by that. So I do think that it's actually uh, very well constructed. It's got a good amount of fit and finish to it in that regard. So I think pretty impressive uh, in that respect. Now, in terms of how this actually mounts to your dog collar, pretty straightforward. They include a little piece of Velcro. You're gonna go ahead and put that Velcro and attach it to your dog's collar. I like that design um, because it's very easy for you to be able to go ahead and swap to different types of collars, um, but be able to go ahead and still leverage this. So I think that is pretty cool. In terms of charging it, they're advocating that this is about a seven day battery life. You can go ahead and charge it utilizing this quick dock base and that utilizes micro USB and you're good to go in that regard. So that's pretty straightforward, uh, pretty simple. Now in terms of accessing all the information, that's all done through an application. It's right now only available on iOS, no Android. That'll be coming in a forthcoming update. Um, beyond that, um, in terms of the actual information that you can immediately get right now within the application, you get light activity, medium activity, and then a high level of activity. And then they isolate, let's say rest. And rest, I'd say it's kind of similar to sleep, but it's not sleep because of course you can't track the dog's heart rate. You can't really know that they're in a sleep state, but you can know that they're resting. And all this information can then be tracked in a daily, weekly, and monthly fashion. So um, it seems that at least on initial value that it's pretty comprehensive in that amount of information that's presented to you. Um, and it's going to be hitting the market in the not too distant future. Right now, if we do a little bit of conversion in terms of the pricing, it's gonna probably be around $90, so about $20 more than what the Fitbark 2 is gonna cost you. But I think that if everything works the way it's intended to, and um, you know that sink in in terms of that information from veterinary institutes um, is really, really well done. And they also really hit the nail on the head with an upcoming essentially add-on item that is not yet available called their beacons, then I definitely think the value prop is gonna be quite strong. To give you a little bit of insight of the way these beacons work, essentially you'll be able to go ahead and place these in different items in your house. So let's say like a water bowl or maybe the dog's crate. And essentially, it will always essentially be able to trigger um, essentially a point of activity when it essentially is making contact with those areas. So essentially it could let you know kind of when your dog is drinking too much water or if it's not drinking enough water or if it keeps spending time in its crate. So these could also be other mechanisms to kind of alert you to the overall dog's activity and health in the long term. So overall pretty cool stuff in terms of this Velcana Go. If you're interested in finding out more information about it, go ahead and check out links in the description below. Uh, also go ahead and drop me comments if you're interested in finding out more specific information that you want me to include in the review. And if you want to make sure to see this review, you, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit the bell so you can be notified once I go ahead and upload it. That's going to probably be, I think, in about a month's time frame because I want to have enough time to compare this against the Fitbark 2. And also, don't forget to go ahead and follow us on Instagram and IGTV where the links will be in the description because you can find out tons of cool stuff on those social feeds. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to spay new to your dogs.